recording my slide a <clears throat> okay as usual let's do a little recap on what we have learned so far so we talked about two parallel wires carrying current if you guys don't remember but we did we did this last time so we can have current flowing this way or the other way doesn't really matter so i'm having my current flow both this way so this is my eye and then i have two parallel wires these wires are conductors meaning they can conduct current okay kalau tak they can't the current can't flow lah and then the separation distance between them is called d okay so now when i have i from from the first time we learned about um, we learned about current flowing in a conductor, we know that it will produce sorry I have book it will produce B. So using my right hand rule, it will give me right hand rule yang version screw. It will give me a clockwise rotation. So clockwise rotation of the B. Okay, and now that we have B. So we, we know that when we have B, um, this B extends indefinitely. Kita tak tahu dia extend sampai mana, ikut strength of the B. But we know that since the two parallel wires are close to each other, we know that the B from this guy will be overlapping with the other guy. So this is my B number one. It overlaps with conductor number two. And because I have I and I have B, what this will have what will happen is sorry i2 plus i2 and b1 will give me what was it force give me a force on force magnetic force number two on the conductor two on eh? on conductor two so what happens is when we have this force acting on it Let's see, uh, using my right hand rule, FIB. So FIB, my I is going down. My B is, sorry, I forgot to mention, the B is going clockwise. So it's going out of the page. Over here, this is the B. Uh, again, B is out of the page, I is down. So my force is to the left, left, yeah. So my force is to the left. Sekejap, eh? Recap jangan sekejap je. Nanti kita move on. And then uh, let me use a different color for this. So B is out. I is down. And F is to the left. <clears throat> so that is the force acting on conductor number two. What happens to the wire? If it is flimsy, a flimsy wire, your wire will become... Uh, Melengkung lah. Okay. It follows the force. It follows the force. Okay. So using this approach, we know that we have I. When we have I, we get B. When we have I and B acting on a wire, it will produce force acting on the wire as well. And then um, since we have the B from this guy acting here, the B from this guy, from the right hand rule, right hand rule screw, the B from this guy will also act on conductor number one. And you know what happens? There is a force produced and you need to know how to know the direction. So that was what we talked about last time. Okay, so we had two types of right-hand rule, which is the screw and also FIB. Starting from your thumb, thumb is F, I is your pointy, middle finger is B. Okay, it's easy peasy. So that was what we learned. So now, using that knowledge that we have learned, we will try to understand how torque works in a current carrying coil. Yeah. So here we have a magnetic field. The situation is that we have a magnetic field. Remember, magnetic field extends from north and ends at south. So my magnetic field goes from here to here. This is my magnetic field. And I have current flowing in my conductor. This is a conductor. And this is my eye. And I have this conductor rotating, rotating about an axis. So the axis is called a shaft. I will just call it axis. 
Okay, so this is my axis of rotation. Okay, so from last semester, we learned about torque. Actually, we learned about torque, but not in this manner. Good, I don't remember this part. We learned about torque. And what is torque? Okay, to refresh your mind about torque, we had this situation. We had a hinge or an axis of rotation. Axis of rotation. Uh, Okay, so I have an axis of rotation here or a hinge. What is a hinge? The hinge is like um, you have a door. This is your door. This is a knob. You have the hinge over here. Apa benda lah tu tak tahulah saya nama bahasa Melayu dia apa. Hinge. Apa? Tak tahulah. Okay, you guys know what hinge is. It's for the door. Incel. Oh, incel, yes. Thank you. Incel. Incel ke incel? Incel. Angcel, E N G. Okay, Angcel. Okay, so if you want to call it Angcel, boleh panggil hinge boleh. But ultimately, it is the axis of rotation. So your door punya axis of rotation is at this point. This is where it rotates. This is where it rotates. So I'm going to draw that a little bit bigger later. Um, okay. So again, the situation is we have a door. Ya Allah, kenapa lah door saya buruk? Tapi tak apalah. So, this is my hinge. Okay, so your door. Your door, eh? Because it, this is a funky looking door. Kita boleh tolak, kita boleh tarik, right? Tolak, it goes this way. Uh, sorry, tarik, it goes this way. Tolak, it goes the other way. So, I can say that the point, all the point of the door is moving. Everything here is moving, right? Except, except for the hinge. Except for this guy. This guy does not move. It still, it stays there. Even though the door is like moving forward, backwards, forward, this hinge is unbothered. Just stay there. So this is where we know that this guy is the axis of rotation. Because the axis of rotation is the, the bukan nak cakap the static, tapi I would say it is the static point for everything that else that is moving. So for the door, you know that the hinge will not move forward or backward, even though the door moves forward and backward. So the hinge stays there and it is the axis of rotation. So that is how you determine the axis of rotation. And if we see, um, we try to imagine this in another way. Um, I don't have a ruler. So let's imagine we have a ruler over here. This is my ruler. I You place your thumb over here. This is your thumb. Lah. That is one weird looking thumb. Okay, kejap saya lukis balik. Kejap, eh? We have a ruler. Okay, this is my ruler but you are the one holding it using your thumb. I don't know why your thumb looks like that. So, korang pegang macam tu lah. So, you pegang macam ni but um, you try to move it up and down. You try to move the pembaris, the ruler up and down. You try to move it clockwise and clockwise, clockwise and clockwise. Everything, all the points on this pembaris moves up or down, up or down. The place that you put your finger, the, the place that you hold the pembaris is the only place that is not moving. That is your axis of rotation. So again, that is your axis of rotation. And for um, torque, you need to know the first thing that you need to know is the axis of rotation. So that is why I went into uh, in, into great lengths to under to make you understand again what is the axis of rotation. So we have the axis of rotation here. And if I apply a force here to make it go down, or I apply a force over here to make it go up, right? It depends on where I apply my force and where my axis of rotation is. My R is from the axis to the F. That is my R. Okay. So if I change the position of my F, I don't want to uh, apply force at the end of the ruler, but instead I want to apply my force in the middle of the ruler. So now my R changes. So my R becomes over here. So that my torque changes. My torque changes depending on where I apply my force 
because it changes my R. Okay, so that is your recap for torque. So now we are using the knowledge from force of two parallel wires and also from torque for this subtopic. Here we have our situation. Let's go back to our situation over here. We have current flowing, right? We have B and using my right hand rule FIB, this is current, uh, this is um, the view that we are looking at. So I am seeing a current from here going out of the page. Oh, it's a little bit. Out of the page. Okay, but that's a quick. Kat sini. Hmm. Okay. That is okay. Let's just um let's just ignore this diagram first. Let's use this diagram. Okay, so I have current going out, sorry, going into the page and current going out of the page. Ni into and out, eh? Depending on the, this is the X and this is the uh, bullet. So I know that it, that is my current. So my current is my pointy finger, FIB. Current goes into the page, B goes to the right. My force goes down. So when I have current flowing, and I have B, remember when we have a conductor that has I and it has B, it will have force. So the force acting on this part is going down. Okay. And we know that uh, satu, satu uh, direction of I is going down, satu direction of I is going up. Kalau kita potong, uh, make it, we look at the cross section, right? So here is another cross section. This is your I going out of the page and your B to the right, <clears throat> so your uh, pointy finger out of the pitch, middle finger to the right, your F is going up. So here you have your F going up. So when you have your F going up here and your F over here going down, you will create a clockwise motion. So this is how the motion in this case works. Okay, so let's look at this diagram now again using the FIB, when we have when we have I and we have B, we will get F, right? So looking at this diagram, I have my I going down here, my B to this, to the, to the right. So if I wanted to look at this diagram, so I goes down, B to the right, F is going this way. Okay, so I know this is my F going out of the page. My other F over here goes into the page. So I am getting a rotation this way, like that. This is the side view. This is like, I don't know, 3D view good. Okay, so this is how it works. So of course, when we have this, we will have equations. So the equation for that is torque. We start with the equation of torque, which is tau. Tau is a vector, torque is a vector equals to the cross product of R Remember, R is your F to the axis of rotation and the applied force, okay? I forgot what R is. I think it's lever arm. I think that is what the name is, but I forgot. But R is that, lah. you know what R is. Applied force and R is um, lever arm code number D. Or you can just say axis the length from axis to force okay so that is your r so the magnitude of torque is when you expand this equation remember a cross product is always a sine theta it always wants to be perpendicular it cannot be parallel so rf sine theta torque on the vertical part of the loop is uh, where is that torque on the vertical part of the loop okay so it's saying this guy vertical of the vertical Talk on the vertical. Okay, so here we have our axis of rotation. Okay, so axis of rotation. This is our axis of rotation. And our force, we saw that our force was acting this way and this way. So it applies through, applies on this whole, whole um, section. Lah. So I can say 
my F is applied, my F goes, how do I say this? Um, macam ni lah kot kan? Eh, balik. Susah lah nak imagine, kena pakai side view juga. Okay, let's try this again. So my axis of rotation is here. Okay, this is the same guy, axis or the shaft. And I have my F over here. Okay, so that is my force, which means that this is my R. Okay, what angle am I looking this from? I'm looking at from this cross section. I'm looking at this cross section. Tak tahu lah macam mana nak bagi korang faham ke tak benda tu. Okay, so I'm looking at that cross section. So my axis of rotation is this guy. And this is the D, the whole D. And F is over here and over here, right? Or terbalik pada tu. We don't know the direction of F. Maybe it's this way, okay. So that is my F. So F to the axis of rotation is R. So that is your R. So R is D over 2. Tu je nak bagi tahu, tapi macam complicated pula. D over 2. And F, we know that from our equation from the parallel conductors tadi tu, the equation is um, ILB or BIL. You know? BIL, where is it? Where is it? Okay, I forgot where, where the slide is. BIL. Okay, it's this guy. So F equals to ILB or BIL sine theta. Tapi kat sini kita tahu everything is perpendicular. So let's just ignore the sign. So F equals to BIL for a straight wire carrying current. For a straight wire carrying current in a magnetic field. So the force is given by this equation. So we have to use this equation for the torque guy. So F equals to BIL. Okay, so I'm substituting F for ILB or BIL and the sign stays there. And then two times, okay. So actually what I'm doing is I am calculating the torque over here. So that is the torque that I'm looking at. I, I am calculating F. I know what the R is and the B is given. This is the B. So this is only one side of the um, coil. But we also have another side of the coil that has another force and also carrying current and is in a constant magnetic field. So the, not, the net torque is given by two times of what we calculated just now because we have one section over here and one section over here. So the net is always the sum. So the sum torque of this particular coil because there is two forces going one is going out of the page, one is going into the page. So we have two forces. We have two R's. So we have two torques. So the sum is um, two times D over two sine theta ILB. Okay. So a co for a coil with N loops, our derivation is based on a single loop coil. Maksudnya N equals to one. So if your coil is more than one, so your equation is NIAB sine theta. Okay, so if you don't want to derive, just memorize this equation, okay? So that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, okay, so let's see, what is IAB? So I is your current, N is your number of coils. Okay, oh, that's pretty easy. Point. Yes, Sophia, kenapa? Oh, tekan. Oh, tekan, okay. And then we have D, okay, do we need to cross out, right? D times with L gives us area. So D times L gives us area. So that is where our A comes from. And then we have the B and the sign. So again, I don't recommend deriving this, but it is important for you to understand which is the axis of rotation. What is the length involved in here? What is R? What is D over two? What is D? So that if even if you use this equation, you know how it works because sometimes the area, they will make the question tricky by making the area funky. So you, know, you have to know how to calculate the area. Lah. And the area is the D times L. This guy is L. This is D. Sometimes they just give you D over 2. 
So you need to know how this equation works, okay? Don't recommend rec uh, deriving it, but you have to know the symbols in the equation and how to use it, okay? So that is that. So the application of that lengthy torque that we discussed is for DC motors and DC generators. I believe um, untuk generator akan pakai Fleming right hand rule tapi kita tak belajar untuk this topic. Tapi memang boleh pakailah kalau nak. So here we have our B to the right and our current, this is our positive and this is our negative. So the current flows this way. So here we have a commutator shaft. Um, I don't know how to explain this. So basically what happens is when the current flows, okay, when the current flows, this guy flips. This guy flips so that the current, mula dia flow macam ni kan? The second time it will flow this way. Okay, so ni ex, saya nak expose je what this thing is. If you want to know more, you can uh, Google this or YouTube this. It's not going to be covered in the syllabus sebenarnya. Just bagi, nak bagi tahu, application dia macam ni. And um, there is a commuter, commutator shaft or commuter shaft, I don't know how it's pronounced, that helps to make this work. Okay, but ultimately you just need to know the equation. Torque equals to, sorry, what was it? Torque equals to, the net torque is N I A B sine theta. I think that's the most important part. You need to know how to use the equation. For to explain how the DC motor works, you don't have to, but if you are interested and it's very interesting, you can look at it, you can YouTube or Google it. So apa yang kita belajar ni untuk apply for this guy. But there is more components to that lah. Of course. Okay, so I think that's it for chapter 19. I hope that was okay, the explanation, because we had to remember about torque and we had to use the parallel conductor, sorry, the conductor carrying current in a magnetic field punya equation together to make this equation. So here, please uh, revise this equation for your upcoming finals. Bagi tahu awal alamat tadi buka pula benda lain. Okay, so stop sharing. I'm going to share chapter 20 now. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If not, we will just continue with chapter 20. Don't save. Uh, doctor. Yep. The way I sign for chapter 19 is due tonight. Oh, is it? Okay, you guys need more time? Yes. Yes, we do, Rode. <laughs> Sampai hari apa? Jumat? Okay. Because I want you guys to focus on the exam. Banyak lagi ke? Tak siap? Let's see. Hmm. Kejap. The question looks weird, Doctor. Yeah. Kejap saya tengok sekejap. Uh, so this is... Uh, what am I sharing right now? Am I sharing anything? I'm not sharing. Okay. Dalam kelas kami faham untuk tu tapi bila masuk web usan kiri pun tak faham pula. <laughs> Orang dia pelik-pelik. Uh, okay, wait jap. What I can do is <clears throat> I can uh, extend it un up, up until your exam is over. Is that okay? Baik, korang ada extra work lah lepas after the exam you have to do chapter 19 and 20. If you guys are okay with that, I'm okay. <clears throat> so how is it going to be? Sign in, good job. Let me see how, how many people have completed. <clears throat> oh, SCL scores. I mean, uh, your marks looks okay to me. Um, ramai yang juga yang dah dapat 90 and above. So, I think I'm going to extend it up until Friday. Is that okay? So, you have the weekend to focus on your exam. Macam mana? Or you prefer for me to extend it until after the exam? Do we need a voting system here? <laughs> no one is answering me. Uh, so ada... uh, doctor. Yep. 
Uh, saya suggest kan untuk kita extend sampai lepas exam. So lain tu tak banyak, tak sisa pun just banyak. So tak sempat nak buat macam tu. Okay, so okay boleh. I will consider that. Everyone else is okay with that suggestion? Okay. Usul diterima. Usul diterima, okay. Thank Usul you. ditutup. <laughs> okay, jap eh. Let me do that really quickly before I forget. So your exam finishes uh, one week later. <clears throat> so let me look at the calendar. Exam if visit 28, your exam finishes until Friday. So I am going to assign this uh, lima hari bulan May. Is that okay? It's on a Wednesday. So your exam finishes on 30th April and then Chuti Labor Day on 1st March, sorry, 1st May. That is on a Saturday. Sunday is two, Monday is three, Tuesday is four, Wednesday is five. Okay, so I'm going to extend it up until Saturday 8, 8 of May, but I'm going to assign it together with chapter 20. Is that okay? Okay, Dr. Okay, Dr. Okay. 8th of May, together with chapter 20. Okay, let me do that. Scheduling. So this is 21, 8th of May. All right. Schedule. Okay. Okay, it's scheduled. Stop sharing. Um, am I still recording? So I recorded the whole thing. That was weird. Friday, doctor. Oh, okay. I need to check out Friday. Saturday. Saturday on the 8th. Eh? Okay, so I hope that helps for you to understand this topic better. Hmm. I'm scared. Okay, okay. Going to be positive here. Okay, let's continue with chapter 20. So today, so today, so chapter 19, we talked about uh, induced, no, we did not talk about induced, we talked about force, magnetic force, right? Magnetic force, and we talked about, um, I need to relate back. So, but there is a sikit. Okay, we talked about magnetic field in general. We talked about the right hand rule screw. We talked about the right hand rule FIB at this point. And then we talked about magnetic force of a conductor, of a single conductor, which is F goes to ILB. And then we talked about two parallel conductors carrying current and the magnetic field that they both exert on each other. So we, um, and then for the application part, we talked about. We talked about single, sorry, a straight wire conductor untuk magnetic field, kan? Sekejap. Where is that slide? Um, 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 it's here. Sekejap, saya kena recap the whole thing, sekejap. Sebab ada kaitan. That sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, so straight wire conductor, the B is like that, and then we had the foil, and then we had the solenoid. And we talked about the solenoid, the inside, the punya magnetic field is strong, so it acts like a magnet. And then we saw that um, an application to this with regards to the charge. We had two equations. One was F equals to QVB for a charge. And then we had F equals to ILB or BIL. That was for a conductor carrying current. And then we had this application, a spectrometer, mass spectrometer, where we equated QVB to QE. So I want to bring you guys put your attention over here because we will see this equation again. Yeah? So we are talking here, we are talking about the force exerted on a charge moving in a magnetic field, and then it is also moving in a potential difference. We have the potential difference positive and negative, and we have the X here representing the B. So the charge was moving in QE, sorry, the charge was moving in E and also in B, which gave the charge magnetic force and also magnetic electric force. 
So that was what we talked about. And then we talked about talk. Talk baru cakap lah. So I don't think we have to uh, repeat that. So, okay. So now I'm going to show you chapter 20. <clears throat> so here we are learning about induced EMF, self-induction and mutual induction. So induce me, it means to produce. So when induce just means to produce. Uh, it sounds a little bit fancy. Okay, so it simply means to produce EMF, produce voltage. And then self-induction, kita akan belajar pasal ni, what does it mean to be self-induct? In, for self-induction to happen, and then mutual. Okay, <clears throat> so moving on. The, the learning outcomes for the first subtopic, which is induced EMF, we need to know how to explain and calculate magnetic flux. Okay, this magnetic flux definition is very, very important for this chapter. I suggest you to really try to understand this part. Yeah? Magnetic flux need the basis for the entire chapter, magnetic flux. And then electromagnetic induction. So from magnetic flux, you get the electromagnetic induction. And then from this, also you have your equations. So this is given by Faraday's law and Lenz's law. And then you have to explain how emotional EMF works. Tak pernah lagi keluar soalan explain emotional EMF. But dia akan tanya what is the direction of current from the emotional EMF. Tak apa, nanti kita akan go through the questions. Okay, so Michael Faraday is the guy that is making our life miserable. I'm just kidding. So Michael Faraday ni dia bagi dia come up with EMF lah. Okay, this discovery of electromagnetic induction and induced EMF. So Faraday discovered that if he moved a magnet through a loop of wire, so we have a loop of wire, dia masukkan magnet, kita tahu kenapa, dia tiba rasa nak buat macam tu kan. So we have the north and the south. So when it moves the wire in the coil, it is actually changing the magnetic flux that is inside the coil. Okay, again, you have your magnet, your magnet either magnetic field, right? The magnetic field goes from north to south. Uh, if I'm writing this correctly, if I'm, if I'm drawing this correctly, I think it's like this. Forgot. So this guy depan ni macam ni, and belakang dia macam ni. Okay, pandai-pandai lah ada lengkung tu. This is just like rough sketch. So you know that you have, if you have a magnet, you have the magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines is actually your flux. Flux, eh? So this guy, when you put it inside a coil, yang line-line uh, ni dia masuk, the more lines that you have inside the coil, the more electromagnetic flux that you have. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself. The more lines, the more lines from the magnetic field that goes into the coil, the more is your magnetic flux in the coil. So sebenarnya, magnetic flux ni relate back to your electric, uh, magnetic field lah, electric field lah. It relates back to your magnetic field, punya lines, magnetic field lines eh, magnetic field lines. And remember, I told you, if your magnetic field lines is, why am I changing? If your magnetic field lines is very close together, this means that your magnetic field is strong. And this guy, kalau dia satu, the line, this is very weak. So the more lines that you have in your coil, the stronger your magnetic flux. So what did he observe when he did this? He put the magnet inside the coil, and something happened. So we will see what, we, what what is happening here. So we have a video, yay. No quarantine yay. So we have a video, yay. No one is yay. Best quote video, I like videos. Tak ada belajar banyak sangat. Sekejap eh, stop sharing. So let's see the video first. <clears throat> I need to share with the YouTube. Where is the YouTube? Eh. Static induction. Hmm. Korang boleh dengar tak tadi? Boleh. Boleh. Sekejap dah sikit lah. Kuat sangat. Kuat
electromagnetic induction. Can a magnet produce electricity? Let's explore this. Michael Faraday, the English scientist, was the first person to prove that a magnet can create a current. To test this, he moved a magnet towards and away from the coil of wire connected to a galvanometer. He observed that there was a deflection in the galvanometer, indicating that a current is induced in it. The current obtained due to the relative motion between the coil and the magnet is called induced current. The phenomenon by which an EMF or current is induced in a conductor due to a change in the magnetic field near the conductor is known as electromagnetic induction. Let's now look into some of the experiments performed by Michael Faraday. Faraday arrived at a few conclusions by moving a bar magnet in and out of the coil of wire. Displayed here is a circular insulated wire with many turns connected to a galvanometer. <laughs> Observe the deflection of the galvanometer needle when Okay, so moving forward pada sini kan, dia suruh kita try tapi this is an animation, uh, so it doesn't really work. Sekejap, we have another video. Let me stop sharing. How do I stop sharing? Sekejap, hmm. kurang. Deflection in the galvanometer. Okay, diam kejap. Okay, one more video. Where is that video? Okay, this one. Electromagnetic in Okay, so Yani lagi staro la. Um, am I sharing? Can you guys see the video? Yeah. Yes. 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 Induction. Okay, fine. In this lesson, we shall learn about electromagnetic induction. The phenomenon of electromagnetic induction can be demonstrated by an experiment. Bind an insulated copper wire on a paper or wooden cylinder so as to form a coil in the form of a solenoid. Connect the two ends of the coil to a galvanometer and place a magnet close to it. The reading of the galvanometer is zero when the magnet is stationary. The pointer of the galvanometer deflects towards the right when the north pole of the magnet is moved towards the solenoid. The galvanometer shows zero reading when the motion of the magnet stops. This proves that as long as the magnet keeps moving, current flows in the solenoid. If the <laughs> magnet is moved away from the solenoid, current flows in opposite direction in the solenoid. Thus, the galvanometer deflects towards the left. The deflection increases if the magnet is moved away with greater velocity. If the polarity of the magnet is reversed and the magnet is brought close to the solenoid, then current flows in an opposite direction. The galvanometer accordingly turns towards the left. Faraday observed that current flows in the coil only when there is a relative motion between the coil and the magnet. 
the direction of deflection in the galvanometer is reversed if the direction of motion is reversed. The current in the coil and the corresponding deflection of the galvanometer can be increased by using a strong magnet or by increasing the motion of the magnet. Increasing the area or the number of turns also creates a strong current in the coil. According to Faraday, when there is no relative motion between the magnet and the coil, the magnetic flux within the coil remains constant. So the galvanometer shows no deflection. But when the magnet is moved towards the coil or vice versa, the magnetic flux changes and an EMF is induced in the coil. If the circuit is complete, the EMF causes current to flow through it. Based on his experiment, Faraday formulated two laws of electromagnetic induction. Whenever there is a change in the whenever there is a change in the magnetic flux linked with a coil, an electromotive force is induced. The magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux linked with the coin. The direction of the induced EMF depends on whether there is an increase or decrease in the magnetic flux. John Ambrose Fleming gave two rules to determine the direction of motion or the direction of induced current. While the left-hand rule is for electric motors, the okay, right hand. I need to submit yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, what was I going to do? I'm going to share. Share screen. Okay. So we saw that video and basically when the person moved a magnet into a coil and the magnet is kind of moving lah, kind of move in the coil, then there is an induced current. If the magnet was stationary, meaning to say there was no movement, it just stayed static. So there is no relative motion between the magnet and the coil, then there will be no induced current. And then the, he also mentioned about induced EMF. Okay, nanti kita akan uh, cakap, cakap lagi detail lah pasal ni. That was just a, like an introduction. So, the galvanometer actually, the needle gives us the direction of current. Previously, when we talked about a straight wire conductor, we talked about having compasses um, placed around. Just you know, look at something. Let me try. Let me try again. So we have compasses that when placed in the magnetic field, it will point towards the direction of magnetic field. So if my eye was this way, so I'm supposed to get a counterclockwise magnetic field. So the needle of the compass points in that direction. The needle of the compass gives you the direction of magnetic field. When it is not placed uh, in, a magnetic field like that, it will just show you north. Okay, in its neutral state, it just shows you north. If not, it shows you the direction of magnetic field. Now that was for a compass. This guy is a galvanometer. Galvanometer shows you the direction of current. So here, if my galvanometer is moving, um, moving this way. So this is the arrow. So it's saying that. Uh, my eye is moving this way. That is what it is saying. The govern when the galvanometer goes to the right, the current flows in that direction. Lah. And this guy shows zero, so there is no current. And then this galvanometer needle shows to the left, which means that the current flows in that direction. Okay, <clears throat> so that is how you use the galvanometer. 
So here, when we see a deflection, it indicates the presence of its induced current. So basically, when it goes to zero, it means no presence of current. When it deflects or when it moves, deflect means move lah. When it deflects, there is current. And then the direction of current gives us the polarity of the magnet or the direction of the induced current. And the speed of deflection indicates the rate of current in use. So, lagi laju tolak magnet, lagi laju kita bawa magnet tu, sorry, lagi laju the magnet moves, the higher the rate of induced current. So, higher speed of deflection, higher rate of current induced, rate of I induced. And then the amount of deflection also gives you the amount of current. So, if your needle deflects this much, Maksudnya, current produced sikit. If your needle deflects sampai hujung, maksudnya, the amount of current produced is a lot. So that is how the galvanometer shows you what the state of the induced current. But this is not, uh, how do you say this? This is like for visual inspection. Into experiment, okay lah, nice. But to calculate um, the induced current and so on, uh, you can't use the galvanometer needle lah. So this is just for visual inspection. So deflection gives you presence of current, direction of deflection gives you the polarity of the magnet or the direction of the current. The speed of deflection indicates lagi laju dia gerak, maksudnya lagi laju the rate of current produced and lagi jauh dia gerak, the, lagi jauh the needle gerak, lagi banyak current produced. Okay, so that was the conclusion for the experiment that we saw. So reversing magnet gives us a reverse direction, deflect, deflection, more deflects, sorry, deflects more for a faster motion. So if the magnet is faster, it will deflect more. And then increasing the number of coils increases the current induced because of greater B. Remember, we talked about B is proportional to N mu naught I naught over 2 pi, sorry, for a solenoid, it's L. So it is proportional to N. So then the increase in number of coils gives us an increase in magnetic field. So that with an increase in magnetic field, we know that it increases the magnetic flux and it produces more current. Now. Okay. So here, Mark Michael Faraday, saw that if we have relative motion between magnet and coil, a current will be induced. Okay, so that is the conclusion here. Uh, okay, some conclusion study. So now we talk about the direction of the induced current. So study, it did not uh, explain well how, the how we can determine the direction. So here we have an end pole moving towards the coil. So our end, remember our magnetic field lines will extend from N and end at S or south pole. Okay, so this is our magnetic field lines. So when I move the magnet into the coil, the number of magnetic flux increases. The number of magnetic flux increases. The magnetic flux, let me just write that down. The magnetic flux increases. Magnetic flux increases. Now, when we have another situation, I have a magnet, the same magnet, but I move it away. So now the number of flux as I move it away decreases. The magnetic flux decreases. Okay, so what happens here? So when my magnetic flux increases, the direction of current is this way. Okay, it goes this way. So if we look here, it is going down here. Down. I think it is going. It is going up, sorry. It is going up. Well, this is going down. So this is going up. So in the coil, it is going up the direction of I. Okay, so in this case, this is the I based on the direction of the galvanometer. So this is my I in the coil. 
uh, how am I deciding the eye? I'm just looking at the galvanometer needle eh, for now. So the needle goes this way, eye flows this way. Needle flows goes this way, eye flows this way. Okay. So from that, um, I'm looking at this guy. So it goes here, goes down. Goes here, goes down. So the front part of the solenoid, sorry, the front part of the coil, the, yeah, I can just call it solenoid. The front part of the solenoid is having current going down. Okay, so why, why is this important? Okay, so remember, we talked about uh, using the right hand rule screw to determine the direction of north and south for a solenoid. So if my, um, okay. If my solenoid has current going up, so my fingers goes up, my north is my thumb. So what I'm doing, the induced current is actually producing a north pole to the left. So that, okay, I'm going to repeat myself. The induced current, okay, I saw the galvanometer needle to the right. My eye flows this way. So my current is going up. My current is going up in this solenoid. So remember using my right hand rule screw, using my fingers, my fingers point up. So my north goes to the left. So this is the induced, this is from the induced current. Eh? My north is to the left. Okay, my north is to the left. Okay, just bear with me first with this explanation. And then when I move this magnet away, my current goes down, my current flow is going down. So using my right hand rule screw, fingers curls towards, downwards towards me. So my north pole is to the right. So the north pole induced, okay, this is the induced north pole. Eh? So let me see, let me say induced north pole. Okay. Oh, okay, induced north pole. Induced N. This is the induced N. So N is over here. This is the induced N. Okay, so here we can see that, sorry, we can see that when I increase the magnetic flux, the induced current is actually opposing, opposing this change. So when I produce an induced N over here, what, what is going, hap going to happen? N with N repels. So what is, what, what, what is it doing here? It's trying to oppose the change. It's trying to oppose the change. So I have one N to the right. This is the N that I'm moving. The coil does not like this. The coil said, okay, I don't like this change. I want to stay the same. I don't want this change. So what? If something is increasing, how do I make it go back to normal? I need to apply something in the opposite direction. So I'm going to apply something in the opposite direction that is increasing. So this guy is opposed with the induced N because it wants to keep everything the same. So increasing, tak nak, tak suka, opposed. So this is the direction of uh, induced current and the induced north pole because uh, this is the direction of in the induced current and induced north pole. How do you determine the direction? It must always oppose the change. It must always oppose the change. Okay, again, I'm going to repeat myself. Eh? Okay, let's see the second situation over here. I'm moving this a magnet away, which means that it is decreasing. I do not like that. The coil does not like that situation. Cakap, eh, kenapa decreasing? Jom lah increase balik. So how do I increase it? So this guy is decreasing. This coil does not like something decreasing. It wants to increase. So if I want to increase the number of flux going to the right, I need to induce a north pole to the right. So with, when I induce a north pole to the right, my current needs to go downwards. And this is the direction of current that is produced. This is direction of induced current. Okay, so I hope we have other examples to show. Jangan.
So what do you need to take away from this slide? It must always oppose the change. It must always oppose the change. So if I have something that is increasing, I need something that to decrease it. I need something to decrease it. So this is the direction. If I am going this way, I want this guy to be attracted. I want the end to, to come back. I want the North Pole to come back. So how can I do that? I need to form an S over here to attract it back. So this is my North Pole and this is my South Pole. Okay, nanti kita akan go through lagi sekali. Okay, I hope that was okay. So, ada tak lagi yang macam tu? Okay, ada kat sini. Nanti kita cakap lagi. So, this was um, an introduction which got, which got a little bit lengthy, but that's okay. Okay, so now we talk about what is magnetic flux. Punya equation. We know what magnetic flux is. It is basically the field lines. Um, sorry, the magnetic field lines. But I did not specify where the magnetic field lines are supposed to be. So magnetic flux is proportional to both the strength of magnetic field line passing through a plane of loop of wire. So just now I just talked about uh, if I have a magnet, I have field lines, this is my magnetic flux. The actual definition is the magnetic flux must enter a plane. Okay, what is this plane? A plane can be given uh, in the form of a coil which is what we what we saw just now. So the coil is macam 2D. So when my flux goes into the coil, it is actually passing through a surface. Kona-kona lah, kita punya imaginary surface. So this was our coil. The magnetic field lines goes into it here. So it becomes magnetic flux. Okay. So again, when I have magnetic field and I pass it through a plane, a 2D plane, it becomes magnetic flux. So the definition of magnetic flux, this is the symbol given for magnetic flux. It's an I with a, with a zero. I don't know what the Greek letter is for this, but this is what I just call it. I, I just call it magnetic flux. So the I zero ni, magnetic flux B, B is given, uh, B is noted, noted there because of man, magnetic, because it's magnetic. Why am I stuttering? Sorry. So this is magnetic flux, okay? So magnetic flux is the cross product, sorry, the dot product of B and A. B is magnetic field and A is your area. What area are we talking about? The area of the coil. Okay, so when I expand this, it becomes a dot product is always a cosine. A cross product is always a sine. So this is a dot product. So when I expand it, it becomes B A cosine theta. But here, when we see this diagram, we are actually looking at B that is perpendicular to the area. So why is it a cosine? Cosines kena parallel, sine kena perpendicular. But here, the B that goes into the plane is perpendicular, but the equation is a cosine. So now uh, we need to know what is the definition, what is the direction of an A, sebenarnya, of an area. So when I talk about the vector for A, I am actually talking about this guy. This is A. So when I have a coil, or when I have a coil this way, what is the A? The A is here. This is the direction of A. So it's always perpendicular to the plane. I know it's weird, but this is the definition of an area. So because of that, we have to put in the cosine theta. So B needs to be perpendicular to achieve maximum because the vector A is actually this way as well. It's, it's also 90 degrees. So when I have B perpendicular to A, I sorry, when I have B parallel to A, I get a cosine, right? So this is how the equation works. So A is always perpendicular to the plane and B needs to be parallel to that a vector. B needs to be parallel to the A vector. Or in other words, we can just remember it that the field lines needs to be perpendicular to the plane. Boleh, tak kisah. Just remember this equation, it's fine. You don't have to like memorize, okay, A vector macam ni. You don't have to. This At this stage, you don't have to. But when you go into maths and also into physics, nanti A ni penting lah. You have to know that A is always perpendicular to the plane. Okay? But here you just need to memorize the equation. 
but I am obligated to tell you how it works. Okay, so that was our situation. So B dot A, even though B is perpendicular to the plane, but we are talking about the A vector, the, A, the vector, the direction of area. So B dot A is B A cosine theta. So that is our magnetic flux, okay? That was like super lengthy. Okay, so we talked about B A cosine theta, which means that the maximum is achieved when, maximum is achieved when A is parallel to B. Uh, I cannot spell my good job. Achieve when B is parallel to A vector. Okay. So what happens when my area flips? So when my area flips, my A vector is this way, but my B is this way. So now the angle between B and A is in 90 degrees. So when I put it into my equation, cosine of 90 is actually a zero. So we can say that the magnetic flux in this plane of coil, in this coil, is zero. Okay, Fl magnetic flux, sorry, the magnetic field lines goes this way, but our A vector is this way, it's 90 degrees. So when we put it into this equation, it becomes a zero. Okay, so next situation, we have B this way, we have B this way, so there is a lot of field lines going into the coil, and the A vector is this way. This is my A vector. So the A vector with the B vector, the angle is 45. So just put that into the equation, B A cosine 45, we'll get 0 0.707 B A, okay? And then when my A vector is this way and my B, B, B vector is this way, the angle between them is a zero. So that is the maximum. You get the B A cosine zero, which is B A times with one. So you get the maximum, maximum magnetic flux. Okay. So is everyone okay with this one so far? Everyone's like dying slowly. Kika, any questions? Take five minutes. Stay, doctor. Oh, five minutes? Stay, doctor. Okay, okay, boleh. Seven minutes. Uh, come back 12.17. Okay. And please look at this question. <laughs> I tricked you. Lah, boleh tengok eh. Sambil berehat tu. Alah, puasa. Tak boleh makan. Excuse me. Okay, let's put it at this question. Okay.
Okay, so I am back. I hope you guys are back too. Let's continue with this exercise. Okay, so a uniform magnetic field of magnitude uh, 0 0.5 T is directed perpendicular to the plane of a rectangular loop. So we have a rectangular loop. How does a rectangle look like? It's like this. So this is a loop. It has dimensions of 8 centimeter by 12. So 12 centimeter. This is 8. Oopsie. And then um, it is directed perpendicular. So the B is directed perpendicular to this loop of wire. Okay, that is all. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this. Sorry, redraw this this way so the orange denotes into the wire so into the wire the orange denotes the b eh? so it is perpendicular oops 
Okay, so we have a loop of wire and we have B that is in that is perpendicular to the plane. It doesn't matter if you want to write this as dots, it's going out of the plane, boleh, did that specify. So you can just make it out or into the plane, doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to make it out of the plane. Lah. Okay, so let's assume that it is uniform in here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. Okay, so let's assume uh, it's uniform inside the plane of coil. So find the magnetic flux through the loop. So magnetic flux, we know that the equation for that is B A cosine theta. And we know what B is. It is given as 0 0.5 Tesla and the A vector the A vector, we are just going to say it is this way. Tak kisah sebenarnya. A can be from that side or the other side. So this is my A vector. Mm. And then the area, sorry, the value for A, that is the direction. The value for A is given by 12 by 8. So the area is 0 0.12 times with 0 0.08. So you will get... Um, where's my comment? So 0 0.12 times 0 0.08 is 9.6 times 10 to the 3, minus 3. And what about the angle? So we have our A vector, which is always perpendicular to the plane. And we have our B vector, which is going out or into, doesn't matter. So the angle between them is supposed to be zero. So here I can say that B is 0 0.5, A is 9.6 times 10 to the minus three, and the angle is zero. So this is a cosine zero. Okay, so the answer is 4.8 times 10 to the minus three, Weber. So I have not introduced this yet. So Weber is the unit for magnetic flux. Weber or W. Capital W, B, Weber. Okay. So that was fairly easy. I think it's just the equation and knowing the direction of A and knowing the direction of B. Okay. So that is magnetic flux. So next one, the conducting circular loop. So circular. So the area is a circle, pi r squared, of radius 25 centimeters. So area in this case is pi r squared. R is 25. 0 0.25 squared. So this is your area. It's placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0 0.36. So B is 0 0.36, where its direction is parallel with the normal of the plane. The normal of the plane. So if I have a circular loop, the normal of the plane is this way. Normal means just 90 degrees. So the normal of a plane is 90 degrees to the plane. So this is your A vector um, and it's saying that the direction of B is, is parallel to the normal of the plane. So B is also this way, it's parallel. So the angle is zero degrees between them. So calculate the magnetic flux through the loop. So A is pi r squared, so 0 0.196 meters squared. And then we have uh, the equation for magnetic flux, B A cosine theta, B is 0. 36 and then this is our a and the angle is zero and the unit should be weber w b okay suppose the loop is tilted 45 downward so previously it was this way this is the original position and then it was tilted 45 degrees downward so downward can go here or can go here so some so I'm just going to go to the left. So it goes downward by 45 degrees. So the it looks like this now. So the plane, the vector, the plane vector, it, this is A, the area vector or the plane vector. And your B is still this way, right? So your B is still this way. So now your angle is 45. 
because your B is um, yeah, memang 45 lah nak buat macam mana lagi. So the angle between B and A vector is 45 degrees Celsius because we know that we tilted by 45. So B A cosine theta, the B is the same, the area is the same, the only change here is the angle between B and A. So it's 45 degrees. So the next one is what is the change in flux due to the rotation of the loop? So it's asking what is change in flux, which is um, final flux minus initial flux. Initial. So the final flux is given by 4.99 and the initial flux is this guy. So 4.99 times 7.06 gives you minus 2.07. So this is the change. So the change kena ada this delta symbol. Delta always means change. Change always refers to final minus initial. Okay. Sini dah, dah 100 kali dah kot cakap pasal change and delta. Okay, so that was how you use the equation for magnetic flux. Okay, so now we are talking about induced EMF. Okay, so tadi punya introduction, we talked about induced current, but they are related. Induced EMF and induced current are related. Okay, so here I have a bar magnet. Okay, so I have a bar magnet over here. And it is uh, N on the right and south on the left. And I bring the bar magnet to the right. So this is my direction. So when I move it to the right, I am increasing the magnetic flux in the coil. Remember what magnetic flux is? It is when B goes into a plane. A plane, the plane here is our coil. Okay, so B goes into A, you get the magnetic flux. So when I increase the magnetic flux, what happens? Remember the coil does not like this. So it wants to oppose the change. So opposing change. So what is the action that is needed? Sorry, what is the action that we need to do to oppose this change? So if this guy is increasing to the right, I need to increase to the left. So when I want to increase to the left, my north pole that is induced is to the left. My south pole is on the right. Or uh, another way to look at this is this is north. It is increasing. I want to oppose this. What should I do? I should repel. I should repel this north so that it goes away. I want to repel the north so that it goes away. So what happens? I need to produce N over here and S over here to repel. So when I repel, even though it's increasing, I am actually opposing the change. So this is the induced, car, induced magnetic pole. So when I know the direction of my N and my S, I can know the direction of my I. So here, remember, if it's anti-clockwise, it's a north. I, I need to have that repel. If it's anti-clockwise, it's a north. If it's clockwise, it's a south. Yes. So... Uh, is this an anti-clockwise? Yes, this is an anti-clockwise direction. This is a clockwise direction. We have to imagine how the current flows here. So this is clockwise. This is anti-clockwise in this direction. So anti-clockwise and clockwise direction gives us the pole, sorry, and also the direction of the current. And what else? Um, I am repelling, I produce N and S and I will produce current. With that current, I also have induced EMF. Now, remember, a solenoid behaves, um, no, no. Since the source of EMF is always needed to produce a current, the coil behaves as if it were a source of EMF. We have the current flowing, but we don't have the battery. So here, the solenoid behaves as if it's the battery. I am battery. Suddenly. Okay, because there is current, we need a source. So the solenoid behaves like the source here. So I am the battery. So the induced EMF is produced in the solenoid or in the coil. Okay, the induced EMF is produced in the coil. Okay, so now let's look at this other situation. Okay, so 
Um, oh, there's another thing. When we have battery, we also need to identify which is the positive and negative pole. So we know that I flows from here to here. So this should be our positive. This should be our negative. Okay, so I hope you can apply this to the next example when the magnet is moved to the left. When our magnet is moved to the left, magnetic flux decreases. Yeah, I should use the symbol now that we have learned it. Let me use pink. So this guy is decreasing. So obviously the coil does not like this. It wants to oppose the change. So if the magnet is, sorry, if the magnetic flux is decreasing, I want to increase it in the same direction. Who is texting me? I want to increase it in that direction. Okay, so when I have magnetic flux that is decreasing, I want to increase it. The coil does not like this change. So the coil wants to increase the flux. Eh. <sighs> what well, wants to increase the flux? Wants to increase the flux. Okay, the flux is uh, going down here. The coil wants to increase the flux. Okay. So what should the coil do? So it wants to attract the south. Come back, come back here, don't go away. So it attracts the south over here, produce S over here and N over here. I know what is the direction of, I know what is the pole of my magnet. And because of that, I will know what is my direction of current. So here for a south direction, of current in that coil is clockwise. So clockwise goes this way. And then for a north pole, direction is anti-clockwise. So the direction is going this way. Okay, so that is my I direction. And because we have an induced current, we will have induced EMF. So this guy becomes battery, I am battery. What is my positive side? This is my positive side because the current flows from positive to negative. Okay. So it always wants to oppose the change. So here, decrease, do not increase. Bila dia nak increase, dia panggil balik. Datang balik sini, so dia detract. Kalau kat sini, this guy is increasing. I don't like you to increase. So you need to go, you need to move away. So I want to repel you. So I am forming a north over here. So that's one way of uh, finding the direction. I believe that are other ways to understand how to find the direction. You can find out what is most suitable to you. This is how I remember it, okay? Ada dalam buku teks juga. So other ways to like, benda ni, um, dia tak bagi tahu explicitly dalam buku teks lah. Kena macam figure out sendiri juga. Okay, so a current can be produced by a changing magnetic field on the magnet. A current can be produced by a changing magnetic field of the magnet. When we change the magnetic field, we are changing the flux. So this is what is going on. When we change the magnetic field, we are changing flux. Okay, so here the magnet moves up toward coil. This is our coil. It doesn't, it's not a solenoid anymore. It's a coil, but we have the A and we have the B. So we still have magnetic flux. If our magnetic flux changes, we will have induced current. So here my magnet moves up. This is the direction. So north, I do not like this change. So this is the situation here. Flux is increasing. This guy going down, flux is decreasing. And for this guy, flux is zero. Okay, so this is the situation. Now, what is going to, what is the coil going to do about it? So the coil does not like this always. The coil is always like unhappy. He's a very negative person. So he wants to oppose this change. So if this guy is increasing, 
I don't want you to increase. So what am I going to do? I'm going to repel you. So this is my north. It's going down. So again, this guy is going down. Magnet moves. Uh, I don't want you to decrease. Come back. So come back, please. So I'm going to attract you. So the direction of north is this way. Right? And then uh, this guy, no movement. I don't care about you because you're not moving. So nothing happens. So here we have the direction of our magnet, induced magnet. Induced um, polarity lah sebenarnya. Induced. We don't say it's induced magnet. Eh? Sorry. Uh, don't use that term. So my induced polarity is this way. So I know that my current should flow um, clockwise. Right? So this is the direction of my induced. Hello. Alamak, alamak. Oh, hello. When it happens, Okay, what time is it? It's 12.30. Oh, panjang lagi kelas. So, kena buat kelas juga. Okay, so what am I going to do now is I'm going to uh, turn off my PowerPoint first. Cancel. Save as. Excuse me. here okay so the current uh, this way is going to go clockwise yeah. so going, it's going to go clockwise this is the direction of my current um yeah okay little little so now the next one, the next situation, we said that the coil opposes this change. So if it's the magnet is going down, I'm going to attract it. The coil wants to attract it. So it's going to form a south here and a north on the other side. So right hand rule, screw goes up. My direction of I goes 
uh, anti-clockwise, which is what is shown over here. So I is this way. Okay, so that is how you do it. Mm. A card can be produced. Okay, I think I think I think this should be okay. Any questions about this part? So everyone's okay. All right. All right. So moving on. So Faraday's law. Tadi kita cakap pasal induced current. So now we we talked about uh, EMF, induced EMF a little bit. So Faraday's law gives us the induced EMF equation. So Faraday's law states that the instantaneous EMF induced in the current equals to the rate of change of magnetic flux through the circuit. So EMF, this is the symbol of EMF equals to minus minus delta magnetic flux over delta T. So there is a change in flux over the change in time. Okay, and the, the minus sign is given by Lenz's law. So Faraday's law, they cakap pasal ni je. Faraday's law talks about the change of flux over the change in time. And Lenz's law included the negative sign to make it complete. So we know that magnetic flux equation is equal to B A dot B dot A or B A cosine theta. So when our B changes, we will get a change in uh, magnetic flux and when our B is constant but our A changes when we tilted our uh, coil we are actually changing the area of the sorry we are changing um, the B that enters the A so so when A when A is this way sorry this is our plane, this is our B. When I tilt it, I am actually decreasing the amount of B that enters the A. So I'm changing the A. This is changing A. Okay. When I tilt my A, I am actually changing the area that the magnetic flux masuk. Okay. Yeah, I'm changing the magnetic field yang masuk dalam A. Okay. So I think and more useful uh, description of that is this guy lah. okay when i flip a to this side to this to this direction i am making sure that no b enters and the a that is interacting with b is basically zero in this case the a that is interacting with b is 45 degrees the a that is interacting with the b is Sorry, zero degrees. So when I flip my plane, I am actually changing the A to J. Okay, so I hope that is okay. So I am changing A, so I am also changing flux. And then there is also the case where we don't want to care about A, we just talk about the cosine theta, that's fine too. So when we change the cosine theta, we are also changing the flux. When I change the area, I'm also changing the angle, right? So area ni ada banyak lagi jenis, nanti kita akan cakap lagi lah. But that was one of the example of whether it can be an A or we can view it as cosine theta, boleh juga. Uh, it's a little bit math here. Okay, so back to this equation. So EMF is given by minus change in magnetic flux over the change in time. Magnetic flux is given by B A cosine theta. So when I have a change in B, I will have a change in flux. When I have a change in A, I will have a change in flux. When my cosine changes, I will have a change in flux. So the change in time ni yang normal lah. If it occurs from time 1 to time 5, that's a change in time. If it occurs from time 5 to time 10, that's a change in time. As long as it's occurring in time, okay, relative to time. So that is your change in time. Um, okay, so what is important to note about this equation is identifying what is changing. Identifying what is changing. The delta so that we get our change in magnetic flux. So this situation, in this situation, we are changing the B. We are changing the amount of B that is going into the coil. So we are changing the B. So we are changing the flux. 
a change in V. When I'm not moving, there's no change in flux. There's no current. When I'm moving to the right, I am changing V. There will be magnetic flux. There will be induced current. Walaupun dia keluar. Walaupun dia menjauhkan diri. Tapi tetap ada current. Sebab changing V gives us changing flux. Changing flux gives us induced current and induced EMF. Okay. Um, okay, so in an induced EMF may be increased by a circuit that contains and tightly and tightly wound loops and the EMF induced is given by the Faraday's law. So previously the equation did not include N but the complete equation should have an N if the coil is more than one. So any straightforward je lah. Just change this equation to have N if it's more than one. Mm, okay. So Lenz's law talks about the direction. Faraday talks about the equation, punya value. Lenz's law gives us the direction to go with the equation. So the induced EMF resulting from the changing magnetic flux has a polarity that leads to an induced current whose direction is such that the induced magnetic field opposes the original flux change. We talked about this. When the flux increases, we want to decrease. When this guy decreases, sorry, let's go over this again. So magnetic field goes into, sorry, the magnet goes to the right. I am increasing my flux. I am increasing my flux. Okay, this guy. I know I'm repeating this over and over again, but I I promise you it's important to know. Okay, so you are increasing the magnetic flux. What do I want to do? I want to oppose this. Don't come in. So I am going to repel you. So I am always unhappy. Remember, I'm always unhappy. I want to oppose things that are changing. So I will form something that repels the change. So if my N is going this way, do not come here. I am going to repel you. So I'm forming a north over here. So this is the direction of my magnetic induced polarity. Lah. So my induced polarity is this way. So my induced current follows this and it will be flowing this way. This is my I that is induced. There is another way to determine the direction apart from the right hand rule screw rule. Right hand rule screw is using this thumb and the finger. The thumb gives you the I, the finger gives you the N. So you know what your induced polarity is. Your induced N is to the left. So your thumb points this way, which is that the direction of the I. Lah. Uh, you can use this or you can just use the right hand rule, screw. I'm more comfortable with the screw rule. But it depends on you. Okay, as long as you understand what you're doing. Okay, moving on. Lenz's law, we have a moving magnet. Okay, so here, uh, is it the same thing? Looks like the same thing. So bar magnet is moved to the right towards a stationary loop of wire. As the magnet moves, the magnetic flux increases with time. We know this. The induced current produces a flux to the left. So the current is in the direction shown in B. I already explained this one. So it's the same thing. When applying Lenz's law, there are two magnetic fields to consider. The first one is induced by the magnet. This guy was increasing. Sorry, we are talking about the B. So this is the B from this guy. When I am opposing, I formed a north here and a south here. This is also a magnetic field. This is the induced magnetic field. I have induced magnetic field. I have induced polarity. I have induced current. I have induced EMF. Everything's like inducing here. Okay. So when you have N and S, you will always have field you will have your current. Okay. I think this is just repeating myself at this point. Okay. Uh, this is motional EMF. Kenapa dia masuk dalam topik ini eh? Kejap. Okay, tak apalah. 
So here it's saying that producing the induced EMF is dependent on the change in A, the change in uh, B, and also cosine theta. So remember, um, flux, sorry, EMF, induced EMF is given by this equation and delta magnetic flux over the change in time. Or when you expand this, it becomes N delta BA cosine theta over the change in time. So again, you need to identify what is the change going on. So if you have a constant magnetic field, in this case, this B is constant. So what is changing here? The change is the A. When you move the bar, you move the bar, you are increasing the A. Okay, let me show you again. So mula-mula, kita ada this wire and we have this bar. So what is the A? The A is the area formed by the loop and the bar. When I move the bar to the right, when I move the bar to the right, I am actually increasing the A. So this is the change in A. So when I have a change in A, the number of field lines that goes into the plane also changes, gives me the change in magnetic flux, okay? The next one, this guy is moving magnet. So this is the change in B. This is uh, the most straightforward example lah. Yang kita go over and over again in this topic. And then in this case, we have a changing A over time. When I have this guy is a constant magnetic field. And remember, uh, there is current flowing in this guy. This is not induced current. This is current flowing. We supply the current. When we have I and we have B, we have force. When we have force, we have the rotation going on. So when we have the rotation, the I, sorry, the A that interacts with this B changes. So kadang-kadang they rotate, um, macam mana cakap? Kadang-kadang they rotate, um, hmm, how do I draw this? So previously it was like this. So when my coil rotates, kadang dia boleh rotate jadi macam ni kan. Kita punya view nampak satu line je. So, but the B is still this way. So what I'm doing here is changing the A. Changing the area that is interacting with the B. Okay. Or I can just say cosine. I'm changing the cosine pun boleh. So area dengan cosine ni macam interchangeable jugalah in my opinion. Okay. So here, as long as you know what is going on, you know what is changing, you know that there will be magnetic flux. In this case, uh, we are changing, we are moving the coil. So the coil, this is the A. So the A goes into a magnetic field. The magnetic field is only in this box. So I move the coil in the box with the magnetic field. So I'm changing as I move it here, only half of the coil is interacting with the magnetic field. And when I move it over here, all of the area is interacting with B. And as I move it over here, only half of the area of the coil is interacting with the B. In this case, I am changing the B or I can say I'm changing the A that is interacting with the B. Boleh juga. Okay, but in this case, the, the cosine is not changing. This guy is either changing A or changing cosine. This guy is either changing A or changing the B. So you can view it either in terms of area or you can view it in terms of B. Boleh. Asalkan you know what is changing. As long as there is change, yeah, you will get induced EMF. Okay, so moving on to an example. We have seven minutes left. Let's do this example really quickly and then we are done. So we have a 60 loops coil. So N is equal to 60 with an area of 0 0.6 centimeters squared. So I'm going to change this to SI unit. So 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 2 squared because it's a centimeter squared. So whatever that is, I'm going to get it in meter squared. And then the magnetic field, the rate of change of magnetic field is 0 0.09 T, Tesla per second. The rate of change. So here you need to understand what is the rate of change. Rate of change, change of magnetic field, delta B. Rate means over time. Again, change of magnetic field is delta B. Rate of change of magnetic field is the word rate ni is over time. 
So delta B over delta T is 0 0.09 Tesla over second. So this is the information that we have so far. Okay, so calculate the electromotive force induced in the coil. So the equation for that is uh, uh, minus, sorry, it's a minus N. Oh, we have it here. Minus N, the change in magnetic flux over the change in time. I'm going to expand change in the flux point equation. Flux is given as B A cosine. Here it says it's perpendicular. So I can just ignore the cosine because I know that cosine is zero. So expanding this equation gives me minus N a change in, what is it? B A cosine theta but our cosine is just a zero. You can put it in the equation or you can just omit it over time or delta T. Okay, so what is changing here is the dB over dt. So we know that the change is delta B over delta T. So I can rearrange this in a way where all my constants will be at the front, so minus n, my b is changing, my a is not changing, my cosine is not changing, but my b is changing, so I have delta b over, sorry, delta b over delta t. Okay, does it look the same? Yes. Or I can just say db, dt. It means the same thing. Delta means d, it means small d. Okay, and then N is 60, A is, um, did they calculate it? A is 0 0.6, oh, it's this guy. Oh, it's Amidila. 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 4 meter squared. Cosine is just 1. DBDT is 0 0.09 Tesla. So you will get whatever the answer is. Your unit should be in voltage, volts. Okay. So what was the trick to this question? It was knowing that this is dB dt. Basically, you need to know what rate means. You need to know change, what change means. Of course, you know what change means. And, and then using that information in your equation. Oops. Okay, next example. So do we have time? Okay. Yep. Oh, we have three minutes, Jeff. Let's end it here. So, yep. Um, it's not why... Okay, uh, can you go to the slide before? Uh, why the solution show us that the change is negative? Negative why zero, the... zero, Oh, okay, yeah. The rate of... Minus, minus... 60 loops coil with area 0 0.6 place perpendicular change in magnetic field rate calculate the electromotive force hmm kita cakap pula kenapa negative the rate of change kat sini pun dia bagi negative okay i don't know this one i need to check back on this one but from the question it did not say it was a negative rate Perpendicular right. in changing magnetic field. Hmm, you tadi info that indicates it's a negative. Okay, I will check back on this. Kalau soalan ni tersilap. Um, yeah, I will get back to you on this one. And for next class, kita akan belajar emotional EMF. Yang ni macam, yang ni lagi confused daripada biasa. So, I don't want to start. Start now. Okay, so any other questions apart from Umar's? I have Divya, Fakri and Umar punya soalan uh, pending. Nanti saya jawab eh. Is everyone okay? Yes, it was a hard topic but I know you guys got it. It's heavy, I know. It is heavy for me too. Okay, so kita akan stop recording. Any other questions? No questions? Everyone's okay? Or everyone's just dying? or dead already, please don't die. So how do I end this? I'm dead. You're dead, okay. I am so sorry. <laughs>
but you're still talking so you are partially alive okay so guys please i uh, already extended your web, your web assign if you want to do it immediately it's fine if you want to postpone it until after the exam it's fine too please find time to study for your exam that's the the most priority here okay so other than that uh, take care selamat berbuka later for those who are fasting and those who are not fasting enjoy your lunch bye bye thank you thank you doctor Welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Welcome, Nurul. Siapa ni Nurul? Nurul siapa? Nurul Hikmako. Okay. Doctor. Yeah. Saya tak faham. Tak faham apa? Oh my god. Which part? Ah, uh, uh, ada soalan tu dia mention parallel with plane sudah zero degree. Tapi kenapa bila perpendicular dia masih zero degree juga? Dia cakap parallel to the plane is zero degree. Is, okay, uh, par parallel to the plane, to the normal of the plane tu. Sekejap. I need to show. Saya confused sebab ada soalan tu parallel, ada soalan tu perpendicular tapi kita masih buat cos zero degree. Oh, kejap. <coughs> And let me open balik. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, parallel, parallel, then a perpendicular. Where is that? To sh new share chapter channel. Okay. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, parallel example 20.2. Yang perbendicular just now, example 20.3. Oh, the example. Eh? Okay. So this one, a conducting circular loop of radius is placed in uniform magnetic field of 0 0.3 where its direction is parallel with the normal of the plane. Okay, kat sini dia cakap normal of the plane. Normal of the plane. When we talk about normal of the plane, we are actually mentioning uh, vector A. Normal of the plane indicates A, vector A. So when it is parallel with vector A, this is B. Tu bila dia cakap normal of the plane, normal. Normal tu bermaksud 90 degrees of the plane or vector A. Faham tak? So when B is parallel, um, dia sama lah. Okay? Ini okay? So kalau is a, ah, ini faham? Okay. Lepas tu yang ni, a uniform magnetic field. Ini kan yang awak cakap kan? Is directed perpendicular ah, to ah. the plane. So sini dia tak cakap normal of the plane. Dia cakap perpendicular to the plane. So perpendicular lah. So we know when we have a plane, our A is this way. This is our vector A. This is our B. So it is parallel. So cosine zero juga. Ah, okay. Bila dia tak bagi tahu, uh -huh. bila dia tak cakap normal, maksudnya we have to draw the normal ourselves. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Bye.